All right, it's on. Testing. Testing, testing. 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 Testing, testing, testing. Okay. Testing, testing, testing. You got me? Hmm? <coughs> okay, here we go. And here we go. You ready? Intentional, but it was a handball. It was a handball. Yep. If you gain any type of possession or change the direction of the ball in your favor, or in any favor for that matter, with your hands or arm, it's a handball. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, good. All right, tell us when to go. Dangerous play. Golly. Not good. At least it was deep. Sarah number number four. She's all excited. Is that her? Yeah, number four. Yeah. Number four. Same one. She's been tearing it up already. Tori Thompson. Tori Thompson scores first. Breakdown on the defense, and Katie came out too quick. I mean, she kind of had to, but. All right, you better earn it back now, girls. You don't play good well behind the eight ball. Get off your foot. There we go. Ah. Foul coming in from behind. First. First half. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and we're sorry for the temporary delay that we had coming on today. Two, 21 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half here. Statesboro's already scored. Tori Thompson for the Lady Blue Devils. Hi, I'm Greg Shook, along with the head soccer coach at Locust Grove High School, Jason Wayne. Coach Wayne, take us through the action so far. Well, it's been kind of back and forth, unfortunately, for our, for our girls. Um, we just have taken a couple shots in from the uh, outside right. We've had a couple girls doing some hard work, but nothing really strong enough to get into the first, uh, get our goal in. Um, on the, for the first time. Unfortunately, our defense broke down a little bit and forced our goalkeeper to come out 
and um, number four, uh, Tori Thompson for Statesboro, was able to come in and uh, and get it past the goalkeeper and have a nice little easy touch to get in the goal. And coach, so far it looks like Statesboro has been on the attack ever since we've got started through here from the kickoff. They put Locust Grove on the defensive end, and we're going back here on the offensive end right here. But it looks like that Locust Grove is really being out hustled by the quickness of Statesboro. Yeah, um, the Statesboro girls are just. They're tearing us up. They're getting to the ball first. They're um, they're winning every loose ball, and they seem to just be on the attack. And they've got some speed up top. We really have to, if our girls are going to do anything um, to protect themselves, they're going to have to play that speed. And number four and number 15, uh, um, number 15, where's she at? Kiana Moody, the two of them, they've just combination with some speed up top, and um, both of them seem to be pretty dangerous. We just seem to not want to go after the ball. Okay, let's go through right now how both teams got here. We know that Locust Grove finished number one in Region 4 Quad A. Statesboro ended up as the number two team in Region 3 Quad A. Right there to miss the goal. We know that Statesboro had a big win coming off through the playoffs as they beat Richmond Academy after being down one to nothing in the second half and, told, and scored three goals to advance to the championship match in which in the championship match that they ended up uh, losing to, I believe it was Coach Wayne County. And that's correct. Um, and it sounds like they fought hard to get to where they are. The number three seed is not always the easiest route to take, but um, but um, today they're starting to prove that they deserve to be here. That's for sure. And it looks like that right now that we see that out of the region so far, both number one and number two teams out of each region have advanced, with Wayne County being the number one seed out of region three and the number one seed, of course, Locust Grove out of Region 4, Quad A, the number two teams was Statesboro, and the number two team out of our region who advanced today to play Crisp County was Upson Lee. Yeah, Upson Lee, they, they gave us a run for our money this year as they played in the regular season. Um, they definitely deserve to be doing well. Um, the game against Chris County, um, I haven't didn't get a chance to see them, but I know that they did. Uh, they must have done pretty well to, to advance. Um, and did they play Chris County? No, I believe it. Yes, they played – they play Chris County and Upson Lee defeated Chris County ten to nothing. So um, you know, Chris, sometimes you get a nice lucky draw, which we um, we thought last week we were going to have a nice little lucky draw too. We ended up playing them five nothing. That's still a definite strong win, but um, I believe those girls that we played against with Worth County they gave us a little bit more of a run for our money than we thought. Um, it was not until the second half that we put those five goals in. And last year we know that Statesboro was defeated in the first round of the state play of oh, the region playoffs. I'm sorry. And then they went on to appear uh, this year uh, in the Sweet 16. And so Statesboro High School has appeared in girls soccer over the past 10 years. Uh, just one, uh, I'm sorry, over the past 10 years they've appeared only one time in the Sweet 16. And they're looking to advance today if they can go into the Elite Eight. But right now it looks like Locust Grove is back on the attack, Coach. And we've had Statesboro on the defense with three defenders back. Yeah, um, you know, sometimes they play um, – Some certain teams will try to push up a little bit and bring the attack. They always say sometimes that the, uh, the best defense is a good offense. And so if they have the strength in the top and they can put three in the back and still put the pressure on our midfield and our strikers, then um, so be it. Uh, they, they put those ones in the back there, and, and as you can see right now, the, the speed of the attack is, is putting a little pressure on us and, and causing us a little trouble. And we know last week, Coach, against Worth County, that Locust Grove pretty much dominated the entire game from the beginning. And we see today it's going to be a totally different setup and a totally different matchup for Locust Grove as we see Statesboro pressing the ball each and every time down the field. Yeah, um, Statesboro, you know, predicting this game was going to be an all-out war um, was what a lot of people were believing in. And that's true. This has become, a, uh, a, right now, a defensive battle for our girls, although we've had a few breakaways and had a few generated a few chances. But, um, yeah, I predict the rest of this game is just going to be back and forth. And Coach, we're going to sit here and gonna try to go through the play-by-play -play with you right here and take us up right here as Jamie Smith has the ball on the right wing. Yeah, and she passes it out to, McCloss, um, to Michaela on the outside right. And Michaela's pretty strong and got a good speed, and she's got an excellent cross. Um, unfortunately, that one didn't come to any fruition for us, but um, that's going to give us a goal kick for Statesboro. Their, uh, their defense – is going to set up and push up a little bit so that this goal kick can um, possibly come up and help them out a little bit and move towards the middle. Now, there's one thing that we were noticing on the Statesboro schedule as we were going through it earlier, that Statesboro basically, 
with teams with advanced records, uh, such as Wayne County, who finished 14-3-2 on the season. It was a 5-1 to one loss. And we go back up and we look across over here to Savannah's Arts Academy, who finished 12-4 and four on the season. It was a 2-1 to one loss. So we see in, just in those losses right there that they're close losses. But, however, when you look at Wayne County being the number one team out of that region, you can kind of understand why. Yeah, um, Statesboro, they, they, like you said, they have trouble with teams that have winning records. Um, the only team that they really were able to, to defeat that had a winning record was Rutland High School. Um, and Well, actually, in Richmond Academy, but both of those teams are not very strong. I mean, they have a winning record, but when you look at the region that they're in and the opponents that they played, they're, they're not very strong teams. They just chose teams that were going to help them to have a winning record. Um, yeah, it usually bids well for a team like us. We've had to play some, some difficult teams, but we've also had some easy teams to play along the way as well. Okay, and if you look at Richmond Academy, was defeated in the first round against Howard out of Region 2, the number two team. They were defeated 5-1. to one. And, of course, you look at Wayne County, of course, as you said before, they swept Perry by a score of 7 to nothing in the first round to advance to the Sweet 16. Yeah, um, the uh, – when you get it a little bit further into the the playoff bracket, you're going to get some. You're going to weed out all of the the ten nothings and the sweeps and everything, and then you're going to start to see some good soccer being played. Definitely. And of course, as just as any sport that we go through, coach, anytime you get down into the Sweet 16, you know that you got the 16 best teams in the state of Georgia. And that is absolutely right. And as they as they weed it down, it's just going to get better and better um, when you see these games being played. The these teams definitely deserve to be where they are. They've worked hard all season, and they're pretty. Like a, in, like we said in the last game, you know, in the first round, you have to weed out those those teams that are may have just gotten lucky. Right, and if you look right now, we're looking at the winner of this game will end up playing the winner between Marist and Alexander. And of course, when you say Marist, that's a name synonymous with soccer. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's not just soccer. They they do well in practically every sport that they they seem to be um, playing in. Um, and Marist is is probably going to be the favorite against this team and Alexander. Although Alexander's not a bad team, um, Maris is definitely the favorite in that. So that's the assumption that the winner of this game would probably end up playing that, um, playing Maris. Okay, and playing for home field advantage. Here's we see, once again, Statesboro on the attack on the left side of the field. You've got a uh, – sorry about that. All right, bringing back in the middle, you got Jamie Smith. He's going to be passing it out to Michaela. Unfortunately, it goes out of bounds. So we look at the weather today, Coach. It has started at 2.30 today. It was 57 degrees and mostly cloudy. It has warmed up nicely, 67 degrees right now, mostly sunny. The field's a little bit damp out there. How do those conditions play in today's game? Well, in the soccer field, our field here doesn't drain very well, especially on on our left, um, the uh, left-hand side closest to us. That corner does not drain well at all. It gets a little sloshy. And as as this team is going to be playing more and more, the, the field, these cleats, are going to tear up this field a little bit. It's going to change the trajectory of the ball a little bit. Um, but it was cut today, and it's got a, a nice short grass, and so we probably should be able to have a, a, a nice playing surface for them to play on. Okay, Coach, and we go back over through here, looking once again is through the region. We know that when we look at the region, Wayne County finishes number one in their region. Number two finished out of the region was Statesboro. Number three was Richmond Academy, and number four was South Effingham. As we said before, both number one and two teams advanced out of each region with number three team out of Region 4, Quad A, Spalding County, was defeated by Westover 2-1. to one. And We look over here that Woodland of Henry County was defeated by Cairo 1-0. to nothing. Yeah, that's a shame for our region that they didn't get past the first round for those two teams. Um, I know that Woodland is a pretty good team, and um, Cairo, of course, they had a very w strong winning record. Um, that region of the, of the state is not necessarily known for soccer, but Cairo has definitely got something special because Woodland came prepared. As far as Spalding, Spalding, they gave us a run for our money um, when we played them, that we played to a tie and ended up going into penalty kicks. And so to have Spalding lose to Westover, that means that, that Westover came to play that night. And I think that also says a lot for the region this year because if you notice State Spurl out here, they're on the attack right off the bat. They're ready to play out through here. And like we said, once again, when you get to the region or state playoffs, I'm sorry, you're looking at everybody's record as 0-0. And that's right. That's right. You, you start, it's, it's either win or go home. And, and this is definitely uh, one of those opportunities that I feel that our girls are, maybe they're feeling a little bit of the pressure tonight, maybe a little bit of those jitters. It might be the second half before they settle in. 
Okay, ball comes in on the sideline on the side over there by Spalding County. I'm sorry, by Statesboro. You got number seven, up a little a trip up on the back. A um, little bit of pressure put on by Alex Travis, and we win a, a throw in. It's an excellent opportunity for us to, to move down the field a little bit and try to generate a scoring opportunity. Let's talk about the speed once again. I'm kind of impressed out here looking at Statesboro. They come out here, and they seem to have a lot of speed on the soccer field compared to our girls, and our girls are not, are not slow by any means. But yet, when you see them against somebody like Statesboro, it, it just kind of makes you sit back and wonder a little bit. Yeah, and it's all relative. Um, you get some teams that you know, speed definitely helps in a lot of cases, but it also is your skill on the ball, and it's, and it's your, your tactical knowledge and how you move the ball around the field and whether or not you can pass the ball well. They seem to use their speed very well. They make overlapping runs as, uh, as Tori comes in, and I believe Haley got a little lucky with the tackle on that. She got all ball, but the leg swings up. Sometimes the ref can make a call on that. Nice little onsides play for Janelle. Heads up pass to her. And unfortunately, the, the ball just outran her. And you can see right there that Statesboro's kicking the ball out of bounds over there to prevent any type of action going around to the goal. We notice that Tori, uh, I'm sorry, we notice that Tori Thompson on the backside, she's up off the grass. The referee talking to her right now. I think she's got a little complaint maybe about the way the tackle occurred. However, there was no penalty on it. There's no kick on it. So all is well and is well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's all, all fair. Just get a little mud on your jersey, rub it off, and play the next play. Coach, let's look at the bottom side of the of the state playoff bracket. Maris will uh, defeated Cass ten to nothing. Alexander defeated Johnson of Gainesville one to nothing to advance into the Sweet 16. Columbus defeated Stevens County five to nothing, and Grady defeated defeated Northwest Whitfield four to nothing to advance to the Sweet 16. A lot of good teams, it looks like, down there, Coach. Absolutely. Um, Columbus has generally always been strong. Um, they have a reputation of strength. Grady is, is an, interesting, um, an interesting school. It's because it, it doesn't necessarily scream soccer, yet there's a lot of international kids that have come out from, and they tend to have a, some, just some good skill, and, they, and they've been able to beat Northwest Whitfield. Columbus, in my opinion, probably would be able to win this. We got looks like we got a shot going in over the top over the by top. Janelle Taggart. By Janelle Taggart. And we look at the Lady Wildcats coming to today's game, finishing the season ranked number seven in the state in Quad A. And if you notice on the ranking board, Statesboro was nowhere to be found. However, but when you watch them on the field, <laughs> it just goes to show you that sometimes – it's not necessarily that ratings are biased, but, however, it's just who is more familiar in the region of soccer that's played. And that's true. And the rankings that are done are done by the coaches throughout the state. Some of these coaches have never seen either one of these teams play. They looked purely at record. They see that Statesboro was 10-6 and six and 7-3 and three in their region. They see that the um, Locust Grove girls are 16 and and. One and one, and or fifteen one and one. Sorry, and they look at that and they say, you know what, that must be a solid team. And they look, and you can kind of look and see who they've beaten and who they play. But those rankings are generated by the coaches, and then most of them have an opportunity to kind of see and have a little bit of knowledge as to who's who and and how good other teams are. Well, we we go through here and look at once again at Statesboro's losses. We have they have two losses to Wayne County. Of course, who finished number one, Savannah Country Day, who is really a strong school. Really it's a are. private school. It's a very strong school down in South Georgia. And then you go across here and look at Mount Perrin Christian, Woodstock High School, which is out of a well-populated area, which mm -hmm. is predominantly soccer. And then, once again, you look back, and that's pretty much their losses that they have for this year. What's interesting to me is that Statesboro decided to play some far-distance non-region teams, such as... Um, Woodstock High School and Mount Perrin Christian, both of those being in north of the Atlanta area. And um, Brian Thomas probably was trying to get his girls some a some little bit of experience with a difficult team and a strong team in order to prepare himself for the postseason. Well, of course, as any sport, what you want to do, you want to play the best to be the best. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so when you're looking at playing it, folks, and any time you play somebody, you want to schedule your region. If you know your region has a weaker edge to it, you want to schedule all your non-region games against opponents who are pretty much strong in other areas. Definitely, definitely, yeah, because it's all about, really, if you know that you're going to dominate the region, it's all about what you're going to do in the playoffs. And if you know that you're going to need a little bit of extra practice along the way or experience along the way, then you definitely schedule those non-region teams that are going to give you a, a 
a difficult game and be competitive to you. And, of course, playing different styles of soccer, as you, I'm sure that there's many, but, mm -hmm. of course, as you see right here, Statesboro is very quick, very aggressive to the ball, very physical on the field out here. And I'm sure that playing teams that like, as we say, in Wayne County in the region and then going back and playing Woodstock and Mount Perrin Christian gives them other schools also that are very competitive and very strong and similar in their action. Definitely. There's so many, just like with any other sport, there's so many ways to play this game. There's so many formations that you can have. There's so many philosophies of how they're going to move the ball around, whether they try to kick it long and outrun it, whether they try to pass the ball around and find that perfect moment to take the shot. And some teams are just geared with their personnel to do one way or the other. And so definitely it's, you want to see all different kinds so you can make adjustments along the way. Now what about patience here do you see today? Do, we, do you feel like that Locust Grove is taking time and being more patient with the ball as they should, or do we feel like we're rushing the ball today? I, personally, I believe that we're rushing it a little bit too much. I believe we probably um, could pass the ball around and try to draw their defense away from or out of position. Um, it seems like every time that we pass the ball forward, it just seems to be almost like on a wing and a prayer and hope that we outrun it and generate a scoring opportunity. Our girls do much better when they pass the ball around and move it into open space and, and basically create an offense. Okay, Coach, as we see back here, the ball's coming back across midfield. Ball's being cleared back out again by Gracie Murch. Take us out here, Coach. You got Jamie's going to take the ball up, passes out to Alex Travis, who drops it out to Anna Alfaro who um, wins a throw-in on that. Very good for Anna, knocking it out there. Anna throws it into Jamie Smith. Jamie Smith is going to take it up to, well, take it up a little ways to, well, <laughs> had a little battle there with the Statesboro girls there. Haley Hall steps in, unfortunately misses it, and now we've got a nice deep ball, which Katie McCossage is going to definitely handle with ease. And once again, Coach, we see right there with speed from Statesboro kicks in on the side and rushing the ball down through the field. And it pays off for an opportunity to get it on the other end of the field. However, no goal was scored. As Locust Grove's on the attack right here. Ball's going to the outside. It's kicked out by number 17, which is Bethany Pilner. The ball comes back up here. Gracie Merch takes the ball on the side to throw it in. Yeah, Gracie, they, they're going to have to start moving a little bit. She has nobody open there. And Alex moves in to come in for the open space and um, gets dispossessed, but we win another throw-in. Okay. Hannah Smith going to be throwing it in for us. Throws it a little backwards to Caitlin Hayes, who unfortunately gives an errant ball. There we go. Now, Jamie, now this is kind of a signature area for her to take a good shot. Sometimes she's able to get that in from there, but unfortunately off off to the right. Ball's up over the right, and no good for Jamie Smith. as Logos Grove attempts there. That's their 10th attempted goal today. And Statesboro with five, but however, one of Statesboro's counted for a goal. <laughs> yeah, and um, Katie uh, McCossage, our Locust Grove goalkeeper, has only had to make really one solid save, and unfortunately, she missed. She uh, by coming out, she ended up missing that one. But she, um, they haven't really had to test her too much. Now she's been on her toes. Don't get me wrong, but she has not had to actually put her hands on the ball too often. Um, and the same way with uh, with the Locust Grove goalkeeper. Um, Destiny Lanier, unfortunately, Destiny has uh, is not been tested too much either. Katie with a nice save and a scoop up on that one right there off of uh, Tori Thompson once again, Thompson. Coach. Yeah. She seems to be the dominant player. And the one thing about Tori Thompson that I've noticed, Coach, is she's 100% from end to end. Yeah, she's definitely um, the entire time. She's great, got great fitness, and she can handle um, all these sprints and everything. And, and you can kind of tell, though, she does definitely conserve her energy a little bit. She's not running 100 miles an hour the entire time. I think that would just be a little bit insane. But, um, but she definitely she knows when to conserve it, and she, can, and she knows when to, to use that explosive speed that she has. Now, talking with Coach Brian Thompson before the game from Statesboro, he said this has been a very trying year for Statesboro with injuries. that They have had to overcome a number of injuries, and a key injury is to the center midfielder, Reagan Thomas, and they're coming off from, with an outstanding freshman season with a second-leading scorer in the first-team all-region selection that tore ACL. In the third game of the season, Chelsea Wilson, who is a sophomore, uh, also, you're looking at the things that they have to overcome, but he said that basically five concussions, five concussions this year with the emphasis that coaches and the GHSA has put on concussions, five concussions from for Statesboro. Yeah, concussions, you would not think that concussions would be a big part of soccer unless you are in the know with the, with the game. Concussions come, up, come about very often. 
uh, whether and it could be as simple as taking a ball to the head, or it could be as simple as being knocked down and just you know hitting, hitting the ground pretty uh, sharply. Unfortunately, you know, it's, there's no padding except for shin guards in soccer, and so the entire body is exposed. So concussions definitely happen. Like you said, with the emphasis that the GHSA puts on, on concussion management, if you want to call it that, we, um, we definitely, as coaches, we want to make sure these kids are going to be okay. And we've talked to Coach Thompson, like I said, we talked to Coach Thompson before, and he said that the big thing that he is asked to do is just his kids to stay positive and rally together and keep focused through it all. And he said that he felt like that had made them a better team and to show them how to grow through adversity. Absolutely. Um, adversity is, is one of those tests in life and on sports, and if you can get through the small ones, it makes you stronger to get through the bigger ones as they come. And you can see that tonight. They're facing what you would think would be a, a formidable opponent in Locust Grove, and, and they're stepping up to the challenge today and doing a great job um, playing against our girls. And as we said, Coach Thomas before, is, he told us that basically that Kristen Richard and Tori Thompson – are four-year starters here as seniors, and they're the huge part of their success that they're having this season. And as we've seen that already, as Thompson's already scored one goal today, one goal today. Absolutely, she um, again just the speed and the and the ability to move the ball. That's the end of the first half. We'll be back in 60 seconds on the Locust Grove Network. Greg Shook along back with head Locust Grove soccer coach Jason Wayne. And Coach Wayne, it's been a tremendous first half as far as action. Definitely. Uh, it's getting back and forth. Uh, the Statesboro has definitely put on a uh, formidable uh, opponent for the Locust Grove Wildcats. Lady Wildcats are going to have to turn it up a little bit if they're going to make a, um, a difference in the second half. And we see that the first half, Locust Grove has eight shots for gold. Statesboro has six, with one of them resulting in the goal by Tory Thompson. And we see Locust Grove basically pulling the pulling the goalkeeper out, cost him a goal on that one right there because of defensive efforts. Yeah, you know, it's a judgment call with the goalkeeper. Who's going to and when, when is it time to actually come out and make a stop? And the if defense broke out in front of her. She's been very good at coming out and making those stops very quickly. Unfortunately for this one, she didn't make the right the, the right move, and they were able to get by her. Defense almost came and, and saved her on this, but they just couldn't get there in time. Okay, and we have seen McClossage, the goalkeeper from Locust Grove, do a fine job out there today, as she did in the previous game against Worth County. However, this is not a Worth County opponent like we faced last week, who was 0-10 coming into the game. This is an opponent right here who has a winning record, who's here and determined to win. 
Yeah, Statesboro, they're definitely ready to play tonight. Um, and our Locust Grove girls, I'm sh pretty sure that uh, Coach Rape is making some adjustments to where they're going to settle into the game and possibly get another goal or two. Um, they're just going to have to, if, if they want to win this game, they're going to have to build, um, meaning that they're going to have to kind of get the, the ball passed around. And when they do, find that open spot and take the perfect shot. Unfortunately, if you force it, their defense just seems to be ready. They've got speed in the back and in the front, and it's just not going to work for them. And that's another thing that we talked about before during the game, Coach, is the speed that we're seeing by State Sproul on the field getting up and down. Absolutely. The speed is definitely going to be something that, that we're going to have to contend with as, we, as we've proved or they have proved against us so far. And we've got to make some adjustments. You know, we've got to be able to take that to them, maybe put them back on their heels a little bit. Okay, Coach, as a, as a boys soccer coach here at Locust Grove, tell me, what kind of adjustments are you looking for for Coach Rape to make? I believe I, was, I would put a little bit more pressure into the midfield. I would make sure that the girls are going to be winning the ball and put more pressure onto their team as a, um, and challenge them. Because when you challenge them, they're going to make some more mistakes. And I would tell them just to, to be a little bit patient, to settle down a little bit, not to force the ball forward, pass the ball out, draw the defense, make them spread apart a little bit, and that's going to generate some open opportunities for their nice um, inside passes. We've got excellent strikers. We've got strong midfielders in the middle. If we can draw them out and then put the ball right back in the middle, I believe we can generate some shots and get some goals. And it's like we talked before, Coach, is when you're looking at the difference in goals and the difference in passes, the difference in shots, Locust Grove has made some long shots. However, they haven't made any short goals that they need to. Not at all. Not at all. And that's going to be one of the things that generating that opportunity is going to be vitally important for them. And, you know, sometimes the small ball, as I call it with my boys, in other words, making short little quick passes and moving into open space, that small ball is really what's going to need. It seems like right now they want to play long ball. And we saw last time at halftime when the score was 0-0, zero to zero, Coach Rapes, made her statement, whatever statement that may be, but it turned out being a correct statement as the Locust Grove girls came back and scored two girl, two goals in the first two minutes of yeah, the second half. She definitely uh, lit a fire under their rear ends that day, and um, they came back out with the second half with a vengeance and um, didn't let up for the entire half. So hopefully that's what she's doing with them today, and hopefully that'll be something that will that will encourage them to do well because with these girls, they've never gotten past the second round, and we want to see that they can get to the Elite Eight this year. And we're seeing where Coach Kelly Barrow, the former coach of Locust Grove, Lady Wildcats, had taken them to the Sweet 16 once before. But as you said, didn't make it into the next round. And this is something that Locust Grove is looking for. It's something that we're all looking for. Yeah, last year they had a tough break. They drew uh, Woodward Academy in the second round opponent. And that's just they're just a formidable opponent. They ended up going into the Final Four. And um, Woodward Academy is just a, a strong team. Unlucky draw last year. This year they got a better draw. They should be able to handle Statesboro. We, we would hope in the second half to be able to do something with this. And then, of course, you got the opponent of the winner of this game playing Marist. And that's going to be almost like a Woodward. It's going to be one of those that you really got to step up and play well. And that game's going to be played on Friday. Whether we're in it or whether the Statesboro is in it, it's going to be on Friday. Okay, Coach. So we're looking at here. we got three minutes and 49 seconds to go at halftime. Coach Rape's getting the troops rallied around, looking together. Coach Thomas getting his troops rallied around, looking together. We'll be back in 60 seconds at Locust Grove High School Network. I didn't get a player up here. Oh, wow, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Let's look at the starters when we come back. Hey, uh, start talking about how you see the tennis line up. Start talking about how you see the tennis warming up in the next half. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about the starters. Do you have the starters of this? Oh, yeah, she's going to do that. My starters? Like our, our starters? starters? Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming that'll probably be the same way. You ever know? Yeah. Are you ready? Back here at Locust Grove High School, Coach Greg Shook, along with head soccer coach at Locust Grove for the boys, Jason Wayne. The Locust Grove Wildcats are warming up on the end zone down here, getting ready to take on the second half. Statesboro on the other end, still huddled up, talking together. And Coach, you had a lot to talk about, I'm sure. Uh, definitely. Um, we Unfortunately, we missed the beginning of the game, so we didn't get to talk about our original starting lineup for the Locust Grove girls. And um, uh, you would assume that since no one has come out injured or anything, that they're probably going to, unless there's some adjustments that need to be made, they're probably going to start the same way. 
And that would be with Katie McClausich as our goalkeeper starting out. She's got 150-plus saves this year. And she has a average, basically, of a – well, she's got a – an average of saves per game of 8.3 saves per game, and she's got a less than one goal allowed per game average. And that's a phenomenal stat for um, for any goalkeeper. And she's just a junior, so we're definitely looking for more coming from her in the future as well. But, of course, we got the next 40 minutes to deal with with her. Um, Starting across the back, we'll look at our um, defensive back on the left. We've got Tori Shanders that started for us. Abby Smith is a center defensive back. Um, Haley Hall is a center defensive back as well. And then on the, running out on the right side for their right defensive back was Kayla Cobb. Um, our right midfielder is going to be Michaela Osborne. Center defending midfielder was Jamie Smith. Center attacking midfielder is Hannah Smith. And our left midfielder was Gracie Murch. Starting out as striker, and both of these have been a very strong, formidable um, strikers, scoring many goals for us. We had Janelle Taggart, a senior, and a sophomore, Alex Travis. Both of them have scored many goals for us. I believe you might have some numbers of how many goals they've scored this year. Well, look out here. The spot there. We look out here. Alex Travis has scored 27 goals this season. Jamie Taggart has scored 23. Then you come up with Michaela Osmond following in behind them with 10 goals. The season assist that we have right now, Alex Travis has 14 assists. And you see that Michaela Osborne has 10 assists. And we know that Alex Travis had two of those assists last week against Worth County. Yeah, Alex is definitely a very unselfish player. She'll take the goals when she can, but if she doesn't think that she has it and she looks around, finds an open person, and generally can get them in a good scoring position, that's what you want in a great striker. You want someone that can take the, uh, take the shot when it's necessary, but also knows when it's not necessarily available and Alex Travis is very good at that. Janelle's per, uh, Taggart is very good at that as well, but Alex is definitely one of those that's coming in, and, um, and as a sophomore especially, she shows a lot of maturity. Usually your young players don't want to come in and, and give up that ball like that. And the difference that we're looking at right now this week compared to last week, last week Coach Barbara Rape had the opportunity to bring in a lot of people, sub in a lot of people, gave Maria Batista a chance to score two goals this week. Looks like it's clamped down on who's in there. Yeah, she's definitely playing with the ones that she feels are going to give her the best advantage. Um, she's not giving too much extra playing time for our for our um, our bench players. But you never know. Maybe that's, that might be part of her strategy is bringing in some of those. And right before half time takes to start off, we're going to take a 60-second break. We'll be back in 60 seconds on the Locust Grove High School Network. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Greg Shook back here along with Jason Wayne, Locust Grove High School. Sweet 16, Coach, as they call it, as we get ready to kick off the second half right here. Yep, um, Statesboro um, deferred. They, I would assume that they decided to take the uh, the pick of the field at the beginning of the game, and so we had the kickoff at first. So Statesboro is going to kick off with the uh, ball in the beginning of the second half. be interesting to see what they try, if they're going to pass back, if they're going to try to push it forward, and see if they try to use that speed, which is exactly what they end up trying to do. Right off the bat, Coach attacking towards the offensive end of the field. Because I think Statesboro feels like that now they've got an edge on Locust Grove. Maybe they can take a chance or two now. Yeah, and as you see, um, it looks like they've put in Maria Bautista as a uh, outside left, um, which is kind of a, a little bit of a – not really – I'm sorry, Stephanie Moreno, number two, as an outside left midfielder. And um, she's one of those that comes in and, and um, doesn't get much playing time. She was a JV player for part of the year. And um, that's a little surprising. Maybe it's something that Coach Rape knows that we don't know about this. And, of course, that's one thing that we try to say as coaches, when you sit there and you look at a team and you look at the, who's on the field and everything, you've got to understand that Coach Rape is with them every day. Right. And she sees what's happening every day, and she knows the strategies and the weaknesses and the strengths of each player. And when they come out on the field, she's got this in for a benefit for her some way. Yeah, and it looks like she's moved Gracie Merch up to striker. Um, well, you know what? It looks like they've gone back to a, uh, a, th a little bit of three on the defense. They've pushed up the outside left a little bit. And Gracie Merch is not being a striker, unfortunately. She is, she is the outside left midfielder, but playing kind of sucked into the middle there. 
Okay, as the ball down. goes back on the offensive end down there for Locust Grove, Statesboro steps in front of it with number five right there, Kristen Reichert, who is a senior, kicks the ball out. So Locust Grove will have a corner kick here on the side. Yeah, corner kicks are definitely an opportunity to uh, get a, to get a goal in. It's one of those set plays where everything stops, and you can kind of these are things that you practice on throughout the season to try to generate a scoring opportunity. It's um, nice save by the goalkeeper for States for uh, Destiny Lanier. And once again, Destiny Lanier kicks the ball out to midfield. It's going to be taken back over by Locust Grove right here. And you've got, I believe it is, oh. Stephanie Marino once again takes the ball. Shot off the head right there, but she's going to get right back up to play it. Yeah, you love to see a player jump right back up and get right back into the game and take one like that and be just fine. Ball it's goes. leather and air, but it sure doesn't feel good when it hits like that. <laughs> I can imagine, Coach. <laughs> I can imagine that. Logos Grove will throw the ball in on the side over here. A corner kick, I'm sorry, for the side. Gracie Merch. Yeah, um, you can definitely tell that Locust Grove has decided to go on to the attack. They've definitely come in and, and um, put it in there in their area a little bit. Um, nice little header by Jamie Smith, but unfortunately not in the right direction. And another nice save by the goalkeeper for Statesboro. Now, Coach Wayne, let me ask you this right here. As we go back and we look right here, State Spurl takes control of the ball at midfield. Pushing your defense up mm -hmm. against a team with a lot of speed like you see here from State Spurl, how is that going to benefit you? Well, it, it's a gamble is what it is. When you push the defense up, you've got this, this gamble that they could play past you. Now, when you have a goalkeeper that you can trust and depend on, that's definitely something. But she does have some speed in the back. They were caught a little bit off guard, I believe, in the first half. But pushing that defense up is giving you more opportunity to put the pressure on them. As we said before earlier in the game, the, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. And when you can push that defense up and let them play more of a defending, um, more of an offensive defense player, then it's going to allow for you to keep the pressure on them. And, yeah, it's a gamble. But if you have a strong goalkeeper, which we, um, Lucas Grove does, then you um, have the opportunity. Corner kick in set up by Statesboro. Goalkeeper comes out, takes the ball, lost it just for a second, but has it back right away. Going to kick the ball out. It's going across, it looks like, to midfield, where it's going to be taken in possession by, it looks like. And Gracie Merch is going to be coming after it. Statesboro's got the ball. Yep. Ball's going to be kicked out wide by Statesboro. Locust Grove goes back in on the offensive attack right here. Yeah, Caitlin Hayes coming up with the uh, with a throw in. Looks like a uh, uh, referee calls a handball right there on the sideline. Now, free kicks like this, when you've got them this far out, this is a judgment call by the player and the coach, whether it's going to end up being a um, – looks like he's putting it on the ground. This would be a direct kick. This could be a shot. And with Jamie Smith taking it, it's definitely an opportunity to take a shot and put it in the back of the net. Um, this is well within her range um, to take shots. She puts it up for a nice little header. Someone needs to come in and finish that. Looks like Statesboro finished it for us. There you go. And then Locust Grove takes possession of the ball again with Michaela Osborne out on the left wing over there. Ball comes back up to the side. It's going to be tackled around a little bit right there. Kick back out. It's going to be in possession right there by Locust Grove. Yeah, the uh, defense, they, they knock it around. And, and it's, it's a smart play by the defense sometimes to try to, what we would call in soccer, switch the field meaning that to go from, from the outside right to the outside left or vice versa. And sometimes the goalkeeper can be put into play with that. And um, as they did pass it back to Katie McClossich, and she was able to, to put the ball back up into the defense. But um, unfortunately, Michaela played a little bit too rough, loses the call with, with a foul. And, um, oh, well, the ref does make the call. And the ball is going to be kicked out quick by Osborne. As she sits here, Hannah Smith comes across, misses it, picked up by the Statesboro players at midfield. Yeah, he's going to go back in um, just inside the box. Katie will be able to scoop that up. Now, Katie has two options here, obviously. She can throw it or punt it out. A lot of times in this, kind of, in this condition, you want to go ahead and get the punt in and get across the midline. But um, sometimes a better option is to throw it as well. But in, in this case, definitely punting it was the better option. And Statesboro's on the attack again right here. But the ball's going to be cleared out, it looks like, over there by Cobb. Smith with the ball is going to throw it, kick it back over here to the right side of the field. Going to be brought up on the sideline. It looks like by number seven, Katie Wilson. Yeah, Grady, Gracie Merch is going to end up winning the ball a little bit, then gets dispossessed. Defense, they seem to be kind of moving back, and um, 
And with the exception of one or two plays that we've had so far, they seem to be kind of catching the ball in the back of the defense and just funneling it back up to the midfield. Um, again, we're going to have to pass the ball around a little bit better if we want to try to get through this defensive back line. There's one thing I've noticed, Coach, that both teams are playing very aggressive on defense and aggressive on offense. And as we see the tackle right there made by number seven from Locust Grove, Katie Wilson against number 10 from Statesboro. Ball's going to be thrown in over here on the side by Statesboro. Yeah, that was an excellent tackle by Caitlin Hayes where to come in and um, – and to get that and it's dangerous to come in from behind but she was able to get to the side of her and, and had an excellent tackle basically saved an opportunity for states for to score an attempted goal right there it looks like going to be blocked by abby smith the sophomore who's yeah. a transfer in from lamar county her and her sister hannah smith number 12 for locust grove yeah abby and hannah have definitely been a, a great help to this team they've come in they've been starters from the very beginning and um, both of them they're they're great they got a tremendous work effort and they've just got a great touch on the ball, and they hustle. Um, one of the last things that you're able to do, um, that you want to do there, is to um, give up some form of a, of a corner kick, but at some point that's what you have to do. Katie comes in, makes a stop, punts it up towards Janelle Taggart. Taggart comes in, gets dispossessed, um, and we get a throw in for um, Locust Grove. Two like subs coming in. Two subs coming in. Stephanie Moreno is going to be coming off. It looks like for Bethany Pilner. And it looks like Tori Shanders coming in for Kayla Cobb. Of course, the ball right there it goes back to Locust Grove. Jamie Smith to take possession, but it's fumbled around right there. Everybody's fighting for the ball. Michaela Osborne comes out with it. It's going to be kicked back out there once again by... Marlon Burks of Statesboro. Ball goes deep to goal right here. Picked up by the goalkeeper from uh, from Destiny Lanier from Statesboro. She's going to go to the 18-foot line, punt it out. Looks like it's going to be held in by possession right here, possibly by number 17 of Locust Grove, Bethany Pilner. Then it goes back out to number 7, Caitlin Hayes. Pilner with the ball coming up the sideline. She's dribbling across, looking ahead. Nothing there. It's going to be blocked by number 7, Katie Wilson from Statesboro. Yeah, Bethany was able to definitely fight for that ball and move it upfield a little bit. Unfortunately, lost the throw in there. Looks like we've got Statesboro making a substitution coming in on the uh, on the outside right, um, number two going out. Amelia Sisson, number two, coming in right there was number 21, who I do apologize, but we do not have a number for her. Mystery player, I guess. <laughs> and when you talk about mystery players, Coach, nowadays you really got to talk about them. <laughs> Definitely. Um, uh, we obviously did not get the uh, the most up-to-date roster with that one, but I'm sure the, the referees would have done that. You just don't do that in a playoff game. It's all T's are crossed and I's are dotted, et cetera. And, of course, we know that when you get to this situation right here, that, of course, according to Georgia high school rules, that you expect each and every team to follow in which I'm sure that everyone out here is. I can't say this. Goal right here. Going to be a goal score Amy by Smith. number 14. No, Coach, uh, I'm no, sorry. That was number four, Janelle Taggart. Number four, Janelle Taggart. Yeah, that All was... of a sudden, Coach, just out of nowhere, Taggart takes the ball on the side and kicks it up over the top of Destiny Lanier, and Locust Grove has tied the score with 30 minutes and 17 seconds to go in the first, second half, one-to-one. -one. That was a great little movement of the ball. We talked about how they're going to have to move the ball a little bit, draw the defense out. It went in towards uh, Jamie Smith in the middle. She saw that she was covered. She saw Janelle Taggart wide open. Hit a nice little ball out to her on the outside there. Janelle hit a nice little shot. Had a little curve to it. Top right corner, upper 90. Fantastic shot. Fantastic goal. Going to give these girls a little bit of a boost. And we see right here you have Gracie Merch coming off the field. And you have, it looks like, Alex. number Alex Travis coming in. And, Coach, once again, what was that halftime talk that Coach Rapes used? <laughs> well, I guarantee you that she fired them up and told them they have to go to the ball a little bit more. And she probably told them, like we said, that they needed to kind of pass the ball around, make a little bit more movement, and um, and kind of draw their defense. And we just caught them off guard a little bit on that one, which is definitely when you pass the ball around, you kind of lull them a little bit. And now they can turn up the intensity a little bit, use this momentum, and hopefully get another one in. It was kind of surprising that Alex Travis was not in the game at the beginning, being one of the, their leading goal scorer and also leading with assists. 
and um, maybe uh, not sure exactly what the situation was, but she's back in after the goal was scored, and she can definitely be something that can uh, help the team. It's going to be a flag right here. It's going to be called offsides on Locust Grove. Yeah, Alex was camping out in the back there. And that offsides rule is a tricky one, especially when you receive the ball, you pass it back, and then you find yourself a little bit offsides when the ball is sent back to you. We see Logos Grove, the ball's thrown in. Comes across, Jamie Smith gets something on it. However, it goes back up to the midfield right here. Possessed right here by Statesboro. Number 10's on the run for it down here. Marlon Burke, she's going to take for the goal, looks for the goal. Bethany Pilner ties her up. She's going to kick the ball back out to the middle. Number four right there, Toy Thompson, who has scored the only goal for, uh, for Statesboro so far. The ball's going to be kicked out right there. It looks like it's going to be kicked out by number four for Locust Grove. And that is Janelle Taggart. Janelle Taggart with the throw in. She doesn't seem too happy with that call. She's kind of saying a few uh, little uh, body language towards the referee. But, you know, he's the man in charge, and he sees better than we all often do. And that's one thing about sports. Anytime you look at it, the official has the final say-so on the field. Absolutely, absolutely. No matter whether he's right or wrong, he's the final one for sure. And of course, I he's can't, always right, right? I can't say too much. <laughs> I'm not going to say too much about that, but I will say that the official is in charge on the field, there and Georgia go. High School Association will support the officials 100. percent 100. percent Absolutely right. A kick well, for goal right here by Thompson again. It's going to be caught up in the air and go wide. Yeah, um, nice little uh, opportunity for them to take have a little shot, um, just errant to the wide right. Um, not making uh, Katie McCausage not having to do too much on that, except just reset it and see if we can get a goal kick. Looks like Jamie Smith's going to be kicking the ball in from down towards the 18-foot line. Yeah, she's got 18. a strong leg and send it pretty deep in, in where we can get with this ball. Headed by number 21 over there for Statesboro. Possession taken by Statesboro, number 17, Anna Marie McIntosh. Yeah, Hannah Smith goes in to, uh, to kind of control the ball instead of putting it out of bounds. Sometimes that's a smart play as well. You want to settle down the game a little bit. If it starts to get out of bounds or get out of hand, you kick it out of bounds just a little bit and reset and try to come back with a little bit stronger defense. Alex with a trademark speed. Alex Travis coming up the line and um, unfortunately gets a little bit away from her, but we do win a throw in with this. Okay, so let me ask you this right here. As your strategy comes out across here, when you're tied at one to one, once you're behind one to nothing, now you're tied. One to one with 27 minutes to go in the game. What do you do on the offensive end? Do you keep trying to attack it? Do you try to play defense, or you try to, you know, what what is as a coach are you thinking about right here? Well, especially right after a goal, you and you've got the momentum. You want to go ahead and use that intensity and that momentum and that adrenaline rush of scoring a goal. You don't score many goals in soccer, and so it's it's one of those things where once you score, you use that that motivation you use that intensity you turn it up and you go after another goal um, two goals scored very quickly against a team is going to crush them you'll start to see their body language show it takes a very uh, strong-willed team to come back after being scored on twice within a few minutes so you definitely turn up the intensity and go after it you don't try to play for a tie at this point this is the playoffs you don't want to put it in the hands of a penalty kick situation where almost anybody could, could have an opportunity to win. And here we go, number 21 down the left side of the field. It's coming up. It looks like it's going to be blocked up a little bit right there by Locust Grove and number 16, Tory Saunders. Yes, Tory. Tory came back and did a great defensive play there. Uh, looks like Bethany's going to have a little bit of extra time to move around the ball and get it off her foot, pass it up towards Maria Bautista. Bautista is one of those that um, she's had an up and down season. Uh, a bad throw in by Bethany Pildner is going to give up, end up giving the ball, or yeah, he's going to end up giving the ball back to Statesboro with a bad throw in. And of course, we talked about Bethany Pildner last week. First game back after a broken collarbone, she's in the game right now. Yeah, you, you wonder um, you wonder why she was throwing that in, to be honest with you, with the broken collarbone. It seems a little dangerous towards her injury. And we see Tori Thompson down right there for Statesboro. Looks like she took the nose off the head of Jamie Smith. And I can tell you right now, folks, Jamie Smith has a hard head. <laughs> <laughs> in more ways than one, that's for sure. But um, she's she's the toughest player they've got out there. And you go up against Jamie and, and physically with contact like that, you're going to feel it for a little bit. And let me clarify that statement. Jamie is an excellent student. Absolutely. Top ten in this class this year in the senior class. 
does an outstanding job. Mm, nice. And we got the ball kicked out. Looks like that right here. You got number 18 coming across here for Logan Scrove. Alex Travis takes the ball, kicks it up. It's going to be high and wide. Yeah, great opportunity for Alex. Um, great opportunity just to pick kick the ball up. Looks like she kind of caught the defense camping back a little bit. She wasn't off sides by any means. Generated a great opportunity. Unfortunately, she just missed the shot. Okay, as they retrieve the ball, the ball's going to be kicked out right here by, looks like number five, Christian Richard by Statesboro. Ball's going to be changed over to possession, looks like right there, kicked out by Locust Grove's Hannah Smith. Yeah, the throw in there goes a little bit errant to it, but we, um, the Locust Grove Wildcats are going to end up winning the ball a little bit out to Michaela. Osborne, who sends a nice little cross in, but is retrieved by the goalkeeper, who was going to probably be putting it out for us. And, Coach, last time against Worth County, we looked at Locust Grove in the first half, had 27 shots at goal. That totally changed this game. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the uh, amount of pressure that Statesboro team has put on the Locust Grove today is definitely um, shown in the amount of shots and the amount of offensive potential we've had. Um, Katie McCossage coming out. A lot of a lot of coaches and and others get a little bit concerned, a little bit nervous when they see a goalkeeper coming out like that. But she's proven in the last three years, this one included, that she can handle that type of pressure. Can come out quickly. She doesn't get caught off guard very often, and um, she's definitely one of those go getters that it want, if the ball's out there, she wants it. And Marley Bark throws the ball in. Then it was going to be kicked out by Tori Thompson. Locust Grove has possession of it with Hannah Smith. Ball goes back out. Pilner goes for it, but it's going to be knocked out. Once again, ball clears midfield. Across here comes Batista chasing it. But it looks like right here, number 12 from it would be Sam Polka from Statesboro took possession of it, but it's going to be kicked out. Locust Grove will have it on the left side of the field to throw it in. Hannah Smith throwing it in. She looks. She has it in the merch right here. I'm sorry. She has it in right here to number seven, Katie, uh, Caitlin Hayes. A little roughness there on the field. Nothing called, however. Michaela Osborne clears it right here. Going to clear it back to Bethany Pilner, it looks like. No, I'm sorry. That's going to be number 15 right there. Tori Shonders. And Tori's a real um, go-getter back there. She um, she definitely hustles to every ball, and um, she's got good ball control, and she can um, – Make, she makes good plays, and, and that's a good pass. When you, when you pass it back to a defender like that, um, you're basically just giving yourself more space. You open up a little bit. Let's Battle for us. the ball right there. Coach, and it's going to be kicked out of bounds right there by Locust Grove. A little substitution coming in. Um, looks like we've got our uh, um, Kiana Moody coming off, and uh, didn't catch her number as she came on. But a substitution for a, for a defender, I'm sorry, for uh, Statesboro. Um, one thing that I have noticed with the Statesboro team is they are the intensity that they had in the first half is not there um, like it was. They It seems like they've kind of settled in and played a little bit more patient. They're not quite going after it. And, and maybe they're getting tired. Maybe the fitness is an issue. But there's oh, but a, he's still good. It comes up. It's going to be kicked. It Blocked. Oh, Bethany Pilner puts goal. it in. Oh, it number is. 17. Bethany Pilner off a great drive up the sideline right there by Janelle Taggart. She takes the ball, kicks it into the middle to Batista. Batista loses control, goes out to Pilner, and Pilner was able to have the draw, goalkeeper drawn out and scored. What a great story for Bethany Pilner to end up getting that go-ahead goal. Coming in, like we said, off the injury for the entire season. Only got to play about four games this season. Came in um, after her broken collarbone is healed last game. And then and played a little bit of minutes last game, but didn't get to play the entire time. And then comes in and scores tonight. Great story. Great ending for a season. Um, but probably more to come here. Um, if, if, as long as we hold this lead, we got a little bit more for the next game. 21 minutes left to go in the game right here. Locust Grove on top, 2-1. to one. Ball's going to be kicked out right there by number seven, Caitlin Hayes. Statesboro's throwing it in on the near sideline. It's going to be taken possession of right there by Locust Grove. Once again, Hayes, she's going to kick it out. Goes out to Smith. Oh, it's going to come off the head of number seven, Katie Wilson from Statesboro. Locust Grove will take possession. And, Coach, what you said, once you got them on the run, you keep them on the run. Absolutely. You know, everybody loves goals. You want to score as many as you can, and you don't want to let up, especially in a playoff game. You know, if this is a friendly game, non-region game where the coaches are friends or something and you're dominating, that's one thing. 
But, uh-oh, Katie getting a little bit caught off guard here. And, and luck right there was with Locust Grove. McClossage came out to help defend on it. The ball got by her. Number four, Tori Thompson once again goes for the goal and just a little bit over the top. Matter of fact, it landed on the top of the net, so that's how close it was. <laughs> definitely. Uh, Tori Thompson is, is something that we have to definitely contend with. As, a, as a, She's got that speed, and she so far has had pretty good shots going in. That one just a little bit errant, but Tori is definitely somebody that we have to watch out. You know, we talked about how Katie was – Getting out a little bit quick, and, and you can trust her. And sometimes, though, when you come out just a little bit too quick, you make some mistakes. There it is, number 10 right there. It'll be Marley Burke trying to take possession of it, then it's kicked out by Locust Grove. Burke will throw the ball back in right here. She looks over the top, sees what she has. Bumping of the heads right there by number nine, Sarah Brown and Jamie Smith together. And it looks like it's going to be – a conference call or a yellow card is given to Jamie Smith. Yeah, that's going to – Jamie Smith, uh, just, you know, after the last time with the other with the other infraction um, and then this one right here, you know, once or – especially with the concussion watch that we were talking about earlier, you have to be careful. When you start banging heads back and forth with different players, they're going to have to give her uh, some kind of a warning to settle her down a little bit. And, and she's just playing hard, of course. There's no um, no malice in that by any means. Um, it's just one of those things where you go out and you start playing. And, and like I said, she's tough as nails, and so she's going to go out. And Georgia high school rules, you get a yellow card, you got to come off the field. You don't get to, you don't have to come off completely, but you have to step off the field until the next dead ball or until the coach decides to put you back in. And we see that Janelle Taggart comes in for Locust Grove as we see the ball kicked in by number 21, for Statesboro with no good. And that's going to be a 2 on one situation right here. Scores no. number two. They got an offsides call there offside. by the referee. What a break for <laughs> Locust Grove. What yeah. a break. Offside penalty against Statesboro on a goal that was scored by Amelia Sisson. That was a break right there that Locust Grove should be thankful for for the next 18 minutes and 36 seconds. Definitely, definitely. We always we said that the uh, referee was always right, correct? That is correct. <laughs> he is always correct. And a little pushing and shoving right there by number 13, Alex Costwo from Statesboro. No, no penalty. Yeah, it looks like these refs, they're actually allowing them to play pretty well. They're not stopping every every um, little foul or every little um, play that's a rough play. They're not stopping that by any means. They let these girls play. The, and these girls, most of them are club players. They've played in difficult situations, and they've been able to to understand what is a foul and what is definitely just hard play. And, and these refs are doing a good job of calling the game and allowing them to play and, and not letting it get out of hand. And the ball was cleared out right there and kicked out of bounds right there by – it looks like it was Sam Pollock. Locust Grove takes possession again. Going to turn right back over into Statesboro's possession. Statesboro's number nine, Brown with the ball. Kick back over right there to Hannah Smith. Hannah Smith looks up the middle. She's going around. Loss of the ball right there by number 18 of Locust Grove, Alex Travis. But she gains possession of it once again. She's on the attack right here, Coach, coming up the right side. Here she comes. It looks like she's going to kick it back out to Michaela Osborne. Osborne looks up, makes the goal kick right here, and it's going to go wide to the right. Yeah, and a great little move by Alex Travis coming up on the right-hand side. And, again, being unselfish, realizing she was not in position to take a shot, and so she passes off to Michaela. Michaela just and simply just missed it to the right. But there again, we're on that attack. We've got them on their heels, and it looks more and more that Locust Grove is not going to let up, and they're definitely just going to end up being relentless. And, Coach, we've got just a moment right here. We'd like to mention that Locust Grove High School – will be hosting the second round of the state baseball tournaments tomorrow as they take on, I believe it is. I'm, um, I'm not sure, to be honest I'm, with you. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lost for words <laughs> right there on that right there. It, it's going to be live on this on this same channel, though, that's for sure. It'll be live right here and play on sports. So uh, Georgia High School play on sports. But Locust Grove will be play, hosting the second round of the state playoffs. And it looks like right there the ball is going to be cleared out by to the out-of-bounds by Locust Grove. Ball's, oh, it's going to come off the hip of number nine right there, Sarah Brown of Statesboro. But it looks like the referee gave the, uh, the throw-in to Locust Grove, and they're going to make a substitution change. Got Jamie Smith coming back into the game. I know Coach Rape doesn't like to let her come out of the game too long. 
And it looks like Gracie Merch coming in as well for Bethany Pildner. So you got Maria Bautista coming off and um, Bethany Pildner coming off. Ball's thrown up right there to number four, Locust Grove Janelle Taggart. And that could be a little pushing and shoving, but nothing's called. Michaela Osborne with the ball. She looks to throw it out to the right wing. Nice little flick. Gracie Merch taking it out to the outside left. Tries to earn herself a little bit of a cross and wins the, corner, the uh, throw in. Okay, Coach, and uh, just to let you know, it did not refresh my memory. <laughs> Locust Grove kicks oh. it up right there. Oh, Michaela oh, Osborne, oh, oh. and it's and a it score. Like it's a, it's a score. A she goal. caught it in the goal. Yes, she did. That is a score, ladies and gentlemen. Michaela Osborne kicks the ball over the top, forces the goalkeeper into the net, and it's going to be a called a goal for Locust Grove. Hey, you don't see that very often at all. You don't see that much at all. Great little shot. Goalkeeper makes a little mistake, catches it, lets it cross the line. Only the ball has to cross the line. It doesn't have to hit the ground or anything. And if you catch it beyond that line, it's in there. 15 minutes and 17 seconds left to go. Your score, Locust Grove 3 and Statesboro 1. Great job of officiating there, Coach. Yeah, definitely. The official was right there on the line, threw the flag up, said that across the line, watched it, and um, great job by the officials being alert. Now, you can't let up right here, Coach. You're up no. three to one right here by two, so you can't let up. you got to continue to put pressure on it to try to keep Statesboro on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, definitely. Um, Statesboro, you can kind of see in their body language is starting to, to let up a little bit, and it, as long as you stay relentless and keep it on there, it's definitely going to end up being a, a victory for Locust Grove. But you can't count your chickens before they're hatched, as they say, and um, definitely Locust Grove is going to have to keep the intensity up. You, if you let up, you let mistakes happen. And Statesboro could they, – they found the back of the net already once, and they've seemed to be um, a team that has, has put the pressure on. So Locust Grove is definitely going to have to uh, maintain this intensity and maintain this, this – um, what seems to be a dominance in the second half. Okay, Coach, and we saw that the other night, Friday night, with Locust Grove baseball. They were down 4-1, to one, I believe it was, in the bottom of the seventh inning, came back, scored four runs, so in the bottom of the 16, and I apologize, I was corrected there by our technical director. Come back and scored it in the, uh, come back and scored the runs at the bottom of the sixth inning to take the win away from Westover. And they ended up, and that was in the second game or in the first game. That was the up, first game. And they ended up sweeping Westover with the doubleheader that night, and that's how they advanced into the uh, the second round of the playoffs here against Mary Persons. Very good. I was going to set you up for that. Mary Persons. <laughs> And uh, I don't want to tell folks that I am the JV baseball coach also, but <laughs> Coach Phillips, if you're listening to this, please understand it's just a memory lapse like you know I have many of them. And yeah, Mary Persons, that's going to be a pretty good game. They seem to be uh, a pretty solid baseball team to go against. And we want to take a moment right now while the ball's being thrown on the side to thank our cameraman and technical assistant over here tonight, Tyler Shook. He is an outstanding student, and if you – Notice the last name sound familiar. There's a reason for that, Coach. Well, I was going to say, you know, I don't care what his dad says about him. He's an incredible individual. Outstanding <laughs> young man. I'll tell you, video broadcasting student of the year last year as a freshman here at Locust Grove High School. And I have to take my kudos for him now. He's mine. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You're not proud or anything, that's for sure. I'm definitely <laughs> not proud of that boy. I'm ecstatic about him, a great student. But anyway, that's in case Tyler, your mom's listening, she'll know that, you know, I'm giving you kudos too. <laughs> Looks like we got a throw in coming in. Statesboro makes a, a play up towards the middle, handled by the defense. They're going to pass it on towards the four to what's like Abby Smith to Hannah Smith. Hannah Smith gets disp dispossessed, and it looks like Statesboro is on the run, but Haley Hall. Gets dispossessed as well. A Two on one. A, She's coming out. Great, great stop. Great stop by McClossich right there. Another great tackle over there on the sideline. That's good defense right there. Katie, we talk about how we have a little bit of uh, of confidence for her to come out and make a block. That's Katie at her greatest right there. Now, Coach, one thing worries me about that right there, and of coach, coach, understand, Coach, you see a kick for goal go over the top and wide right there by number nine, Sarah Brown. You got a two-on-one situation. In basketball, two-on situation, you want to force the, the goalkeeper, you want to force the defender one way and pass it the other way. Absolutely. And the best, you know, in the heat of the moment, of course, it's hard to second-guess what the player's doing. But definitely if it, a, a you see the keeper coming out like that and you see you've got another player to your side, a little tap to the outside, whether it's to the left or to the right, 
that, and especially as the goalkeeper is kind of engaging in and, and committing to one, that's definitely an easy uh, an easy score. But there again, in the heat of the moment, the speed of the game, it's very difficult to uh, to judge these kids for what they do. These are still high school students. They they may be playing in the second round of the state playoffs, but they're doing uh, they're they're just making judgment calls right there at the very beginning. Some of them want to show them that. that they can score and try to get it in the back of the net. And that ball right there goes out of bound off from, excuse me, but no, the face yeah. of Hannah Smith. And that looked like a pretty hard lick right there. Yeah, and then unfortunately it came off of one of our own players. But Hannah's um, definitely shaking up a little bit. But it doesn't look like she's going to come off the field. I'm just going to wipe it off and press on and play again. Now let me ask you this, coaches. We were talking about the two-on-one situation that you had right there and McClossage coming out and making the stop. I know that from a basketball coach's perspective, that is something we practice on every single day during the season. Is that something that you practice on? Not Well, as, as a head coach for the boys team, we did have that opportunity to practice where we either get two-on-one or, um, or three-on-one with a defender and have the goalkeeper typically as the, the backup. But it's not one thing. And when you practice this, sometimes you end up, um, putting your goalkeeper in danger so it's something that you definitely don't want to practice every day in that situation because the goalkeeper could be injured in that practice but she definitely needs to be ready for something like that three on one right here again it's going to be kicked out it's going to go wide to the left side right there is once again Tori Thompson makes the attempt at goal Abby Smith comes in to the rescue on that makes a great save to put pressure on Abby Smith I mean on uh, Tori Thompson sorry and um, definitely uh keeps her from making a, a good shot. And that's once again where we saw that Statesboro had the numbers and couldn't convert. Yeah. Um, you know, that it, it's right now it just seems to be that it's probably just bad luck on their part. They seem to be getting the press on, and and um, they're, they've pushed up several midfielders into the attack trying to generate some opportunities. At this point, you know, when you got 10 minutes left in the ball game, you definitely don't want to uh, sit back and hope something happens. You've got to press it. I mean, this if you don't win, you go home. So you go for broke at this point. There's no difference between a 5-1 game and a 3-1 game. Okay, and there's once again, Torrey Thompson on the attack. It's going to be blocked right there by number eight from Locust Grove, Haley Hall. Yeah, Haley Hall makes a fine tackle. Looks like she gets a little bit of a – uh, retaliation um, tackle there and with a little bit of foul, but not seen by the referee, and so play on. In fact, he called advantage and played it on. And that's once again, referee's never wrong on the field. Well, one thing with soccer also is the advantage can be played, um, and there, if there's a foul, that is quite uh, definitely a foul, but you gain possession or your team remains with possession, then they the referee will put his hands out kind of in front of him and call advantage. And that basically means that I acknowledge there was a foul, but you still have the ball, and I don't want to take that scoring opportunity or that, that possession away from you by stopping the play. Okay. Not a bad call they could use in basketball either right there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but anyway, right there you see Anna Alfaro coming into the game for Locust Grove as you saw Haley Hall coming off the field. Ball's over on the right side of the field near the benches. And we have possessions going right now to Statesboro. It looks like Haley Hall may have um, may have been a little bit shaken up on that play with that, that foul or or the uh, tackle, I guess you could call it. Um, and so she's probably just going to be get a little water, get herself back, and get herself back into it, and get back in the game. Okay, eight minutes and twenty eight seconds to go in the game, Coach. What do you do right here? Do you try to string it out and hold it out as long as you can, or do you keep trying to attack the goal? Oh, I, I say attack the goal. I say if you, as long, the longer you keep them on their heels. The, the better off you're going to be. You know, if you put one or two more in, that's just insurance. And if you keep them on their heels and keep their defense going, they're not scoring. So definitely keep at them. Okay, here we go. The throw in on the sideline over here. It's going to be thrown into number four, and it's going to be picked up by Statesboro. Ball's going to be cleared out. Number 16 is going to be on the ball right here, which for Locust Grove is Tori Shinders. Yeah, nice little flick by, um, by Statesboro's own player, but it worked into the advantage of Locust Grove. And – um, not necessarily a pass back, bad punt by the goalkeeper there. It's going to allow for Locust Grove to win the ball and, and start to move a little bit. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Hayes with a little mistap there. Salvages it by kicking out of bounds, let her defense kind of set back up. And we see Statesboro quickly on the attack right here. Ball goes up. It's going to be come off from number seven right here from Locust Grove, which is Caitlin Hayes. 
It's going to go out of bounds over here after tackling for the ball. One thing that um, that is, it could either be a positive thing in your favor or a negative thing in your favor, where or not in your favor, when you start making substitutions this late in the game, because they're only going to happen when there's a throw in. And sometimes when you get the throw in and you you can use that that speed of play and that momentum, um, having a substitution stop the game and allow the defense to kind of reset, that's a bad thing. But obviously you want to get the right personnel into the game. And so uh, with uh, Coach Brian Thompson, Thomas coming in and subbing there, it looked like they had a little bit of a momentum there that they halted with the substitution. And we see the balls comes back in by Statesboro, handled by number two for Statesboro. That's a – Emilian Sisson, and I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that name right. I'm not an English major, by the way. And the ball is going to be controlled by Locust Grove. That's going to be number four right there for Locust Grove. Janelle Taggart, she's going to take the ball, kicks it out to the side, looking for Michaela Osborne, picked up by the mystery player, number 21 from Statesboro. <laughs> And Michaela Osborne, um, is, she made a nice little run up to the, towards the front, and Janelle just was aware of what was going on and made that nice little pass there. And we see the ball is going to be kicked out again by Statesboro. It's going to be picked up right there once again by Locust Grove. Ball goes out to Osborne. Auburn trip, Osborne trips up right there. Of course, credit that to probably for the wet grass. Then we see right here the fight for the ball. It's going to be a foul right there, definitely on Locust Grove. Number four right there, Janelle Taggart. You could kind of see the little pushing motion as she was going into her there, Coach. Yeah, that, you know, sometimes uh, players make necessary fouls to try to stop play. I'm not sure if that was necessary. That might have been a little frustration. They, they could have been battling back and forth throughout this entire game. But, Long uh, kick at goal right there. Shonders picks it up. Yeah, Katie, Katie makes that nice little play to scoop it up. And looks like she's going to try to control the game a little bit, punting it up, not throwing it in. And um, at this point, you know, to slow down the play a little bit is fine, but you still want to keep the attack on them. Okay, and we see right there the ball handled by Locust Grove. She's going to kick the ball out right there. I believe that's Janelle Taggart. Be... Yeah, Alex Travis is going to knock it out wide to uh, Michaela, M Michaela Osborne making the run up the wing. We win a nice little uh, throw in there. Time to push the offense up a little bit. You've got your defense pushed up really as far as the coach would like them to be pushed up, just across the, the center line. Maybe your outside backs come up, as you see, Tori Shanders kind of moving up and um, supporting that for a little, nice little drop ball. But um, Bethany Pilder into the game right now for Michaela Osborne. And, Coach, I've just kind of noticed something right here, and you have to forgive me for not being a soccer expert as you – but I noticed right there the clock keeps running. Oh, yeah, it runs the entire time. The only time that they would stop the clock is if there's a um, what they would call a penalty kick, which is where you would have a foul or a handball within the, the penalty box, and that's going to require the stoppage of play, and they don't want the clock to run during that. This, now, this is in high school. Um, there's 40 minutes basically per half, and it runs continuously until you have something like that or you have a yellow card, so you stop the play to produce the yellow card or present it to the player. And then it, right after a goal is scored, you stop the play until they reset. All right. But otherwise, no stoppage of the clock. All right, four minutes to go in the game right here. Locust Grove on top, 3-1 to one over Statesboro. Locust Grove kicks the ball out on the offensive end right here, kicking it around right here. In possession right now, Statesboro. They're going to kick it deep down the side. We've got somebody, number 21, the mystery player, is going after the ball. But yep. it's going to be kicked out wide by Locust Grove. No, it's going to be say it's kicked out wide by States. Uh, I'm sorry, kicked out wide by Locust Grove. And you know, Coach, just right now, to me as a coach, I would want to substitute every single time the ball went out. Absolutely, because you're killing clock every time you do. You know, you put someone on the line, and, and if you're smart, you put someone on the line, and they take out someone from the exact opposite side of the field. And that may sound kind of cheap, but you're burning clock when you do that, and that's just good coaching. Um, you want to, and you tell them kind of to uh, to take their time. And if you have ball boys that know what's going on, they kind of take their time to hand the ball off when the ball goes out of bounds as well. But um, you don't really tell them to do that. But if they know what they're doing, they do the same thing. And you know, coach, as you sit there and you make the statement that it, you know some people may consider that to be cheap, I call it winning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's and that's home field advantage as well. You know, when you're able to kind of use what you have. Um, and that's why teams fight for that home field advantage in the playoffs. They're able to get their crowd, their field, something that they're used to. They don't have to travel. And they can get things like uh, ball boys even to help. And, and um, of course, you get a little bit of money from the concessions and things too. But definitely um, that home field advantage is, is key. 
And number 21, the mystery player with the possession of the ball. And I hate to keep calling him a mystery player, ladies and gentlemen, but the only thing I know is she is number 21 and she is not on our roster. And I know that she's making some very great strides out here on the field as Locust Grove has possession of the ball. Going to be kicked out right there by Locust Grove. Number six, I believe it is, Gracie Merch. Yeah, she, um, she definitely is coming in and helping out that team. Um, it's a shame we're not able to recognize her by name. But um, she's definitely helping out their team. She's making good moves up down the left-hand side. And um, she seems to know kind of what to do with the ball. One minute, 57 seconds left to go in the game. As we sit here, we see number two on the attack right here. That is the Sisson. And the ball is going to be taken by possession and then kicked out right here by Locust Grove. You got the strong defense right there, making sure that, uh, that the striker does not make, get into the, uh, into the attack there. But unfortunately, we lose a corner kick. There again, you know, with just a minute and a half left in the game, a corner kick could change it a little bit. You, um, um, it's probably not going to be something that they can get three goals in to win, but um, you get something like this going on where you get a corner kick. Sometimes it's an opportunity. Katie McCausage comes in nice and um, saves it for us, punts it right up to the front, puts it right on there, puts it right on their heels, and with one minute left to go, we have ourselves a throw-in. And we have fans out there hollering, take your time, take your time. And you know what, Coach, I can see it right now. I see a substitution for me right here coming in just to try to burn the clock as Jamie Smith takes possession and kicks it out to Pilner. Yeah, definitely. You know, with, with less than a minute to go and you're up by two, um, it's pretty realistic that you're going to win this game. Um, you know, even if they score one more, it's going to be very difficult for them to get another one in. And um, so now you just want to burn the clock, make sure that all your girls are going to be healthy going into the next game. 30 seconds left to go in the game right here as Thompson takes the ball. She kicks it over the top. Number 21, the mystery player, kicks for the goal, and it's going to be no good. Caught by McClossich right here. One more save for the, you know, 20 seconds right here. And it looks like right now, Coach, as the clock winds down, that Locust Grove will make history by making oh, yeah. the Elite A. Oh, and the goal goes in. With 6.9 seconds left to go. 6.9 seconds, Coach. McClossett came out. Oh, she looks like she slipped down and the ball got by her. Yeah, that could be contributed to the wet field. You know, it's kind of sloppy out there from all the rain we've been having. And just lost her footing. Didn't get a hand on it, unfortunately. <laughs> Just let it go in with 6.9 seconds left. 6.9 seconds right there, Coach, and I apologize. I did not see exactly who the scorer was. But I did not either. I believe it may have been. Um, our mystery player. <laughs> and, well, it, either that or it was uh, number 15, I believe, is uh, Kiana Moody. Um, it's one of those two, I believe. I'm not quite sure. Now, if you're Locust Grove here, Coach, you kick it as deep as you can, as hard as you can, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. And you see it looks like Janelle Taggart's uh, almost got her, uh, her sprinter stance on. I'm kind of ready for this. and looks like Jamie's just going to boot it as far back as she can and just waste the ball. And I think it would be kind of hard to score over 6.9 seconds. But Coach, nothing's impossible. Nothing is impossible, that's for sure. Definitely don't want to jinx these girls. But, um, but when you send it deep, you're definitely giving yourself a better opportunity. And I think Locust Grove is sitting here. Smith kicks the ball. She's going to kick it deep all the way down, pass the end, 3.12, 1.9, and – Ball game. Locust Grove will advance to the Elite Eight in quad A soccer playoffs, Coach. Definitely going to be a historical moment here for our Locust Grove girls, something to definitely be proud of. Never gotten this far in the Elite Eight. That's something that's definitely um, something that we, we can definitely reflect on. And I'll tell you what, Coach, this is, we'll be back in 60 seconds for our final wrap-up. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot.
How's this? We're good. And as we come back here to wrap up the final words of today's game, Coach, Coach Barbara Rapes and the players come out to take a bow. And uh, one little bit of action right there on the field as the game was ending. We saw the – it looked like a parent from Statesboro approach the referees and – had to have administration from Locust Grove go out and stop him. And, you know, in a game like this, it's been high intensity. It finishes in a 3-2 to two score. That's the sad part that we see in high school yeah, sports. It's a shame when, when things like that happen. You know, the girls, they, they work hard. Both sides work hard. They play a, a good, honest, fair game. And it's, it's just a shame to see something like that happen. But not to harp too much on that, you definitely want to see um, our girls did very well. And as, um, as you, you can pan into the field, you see they've met in the center of the field, having a little team talk. They came, they thanked the crowd, showing sportsmanship with the other team. And, you know, it, it's, you hate to see another team go home, but you're glad to see the home team stay. And you're sitting here today, Coach. Locust Grove High School Lady Wildcats advance to the Elite Eight to play the winner between Marist and Alexander, and we'll have the home field advantage. So, Coach, any last words? Well, having the home field advantage is all about um, – that's what it's all about. You want to definitely be able to, to host and to, to have your field and everything. You want to make that team come to you. And that's going to be Friday night. We want to have um, as many fans as we can live. But if you can't be here live, we definitely want to have you um, watching us on Play On Sports. And um, just a great win for the girls. We're definitely proud of what they've done. Um, follow up with uh, several saves by Katie McCausage, our goalkeeper, and some several goals we had um, – didn't have my notes in front of me. We had goals with uh, Janelle Taggart with one. Bethany Pilner. And Bethany Pilner with the other. And the other one was and Jamie Smith. Jamie Smith was the other one. That's right. Sorry about that. And so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, from Locust Grove High School, I'm Coach Greg Shook along with Coach Jason Wayne. Thank you for tuning in to the Locust Grove Network.